Hello and welcome to another edition of Face to Face on City TV. We hope this one will be exciting. On Face to Face today, we are going to have a conversation with the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, a man who runs Ghana Education Service. Free SHS is very significant. It's a promise that was made by Nana Akufado, the president. How has he executed it so far? The man who does the execution is my guest. Plus, why are you not sending the students home? Pharaoh, send the students home. That's a refrain on social media. When we return, I introduce you to my guest. My guest... Uh, was appointed some four years ago to run the three or more than three years uh, to run the Ghana Education Service. Professor Ufuswa you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, Maru. How is it like? Uh, have you grown lean since taking this job? Or I have tried to maintain myself as I, as it's always been. So, except for maybe those who are those who are viewing and seeing me, mm -hmm. they can tell whether I've grown lean or I've grown. But I think generally. Uh, I've, I've, I've tried to maintain myself. Has there been too much pressure than you thought? Or you, you've gotten used to it or is something normal? I, I, I wouldn't say there's been too much pressure. Of course, it's something that it should be expected, you know, um, for a number of reasons. Uh, education is key. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the, those that I deal with are the foundational uh, 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 children, the tertiary, the pre-tertiary, where you, you need to do a lot, you know, to make sure that things get right. So, and again, as you rightly said, it's um, education as we know now is the flagship program of the government. So mm. obviously, the uh, there's a bit of heat, but a lot of um, attention. Yeah, it's, mm. but um, the key thing is that we always have to focus. You know, you may have the distractions here and there, but you focus and make sure that the the right things are being done. I mean, have you always been? Um a manager in the education service or you were in the classroom teaching what have you what has your life in the education world been like my life in education which started about um, not too long ago in uh, in about 1987 hey well not too long ago <laughs> <laughs> you just scared me <laughs> not, not too long ago that was in before about i was born yeah. i see um, the year of my I, birth actually i see i've gone through <laughs> as a classroom teacher has become a uh, the interesting thing is that I started off with the JHS, those days SHS. So we were the first batch of teachers who came out to um, go into these schools. And the first school that I was sent into, I was the only person at that time who had been trained as a, who was a trained teacher. Okay. At that level. From where? Po from po from post-secondary West okay. Wesley College. Okay. So straight away, I became, those days were known as Headmaster J. And oh. the J stood for JHS, so you are a headmaster for JHS. Junior so, secondary, so that's JSS rather, yeah, right, not J, JHS. J, J, JSS, yes. Junior those, secondary yeah, school. Yeah, junior secondary schools. This, where so, was this? Um, uh, there's a town in the Jakobu area known as Fiankuma. Okay. That is where I started off from. And um, it's, um, I believe this one is not so much about a personality show, but if we whenever we get the opportunity to do mm -hmm. a personality, mm -hmm. I'll tell you more on interesting things about the place. So you progress from there to the district. Or so I, I I worked in there for a year or two. I moved into other schools in Ashanti region, and then virtually went through to uh, do my first degree. Taught in the and this was in the in the uh, basic school. So first degree after first degree taught in the secondary schools, mm -hmm. uh, Antoine Secondary School, Prince of Peace in, uh, in, in Kumasi, and then gradually moved on to do my master's and then also um, PhD. PhD, and then became a, 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 a university lecturer, and then moved on. But talking of leadership in there, as I said, mm -hmm. right from that place, I started being the head. Okay. So I had a good sense of what, what it so is. So from your there. first post, you were almost like oh, a, head, yes. a head teacher. But so virtually I came back to teach yes. under other people. And then also, there are some key roles out there. I've been very active in wherever I go. Key roles like being the examination officer, being the timetable officer, okay. and things like that. So I have played all these roles. Did you ever dream of being a director general of GS? 
Um, or did it's, you ever it's, have such it's, a plan? It's, when, when, to be very honest with you, when I went into teaching, my idea was that, I mean, I should be one of the foremost teachers. Okay. And to be a foremost teacher is to be a professor. Mm -hmm. So I have, there is something that consistently I worked on since 82 when I entered, uh, uh, 84 actually, when I entered the uh, training college. You were aiming high. Very, very high. And I worked con consistently. And I also made sure that I had a feel of every bit of it so that I, I, could, I could climb up. And mm -hmm. once you are climbing up, I mean, becoming a director general, becoming a vice chancellor or things like that, they are, I mean, there are options that may come. So I kind of, I mean, not knowing that I'll end up here, but kind of prepared myself yeah, towards it. And then fortunately, when I was in the university, I also had the opportunity to be a head of department. I had the opportunity to be the dean of faculty of art. I had the opportunity to be the dean of in, uh, international programs. And um, all these things are things that actually, I think, um, mm. have supported. I don't know whether you are from a disadvantaged background, but for many people who enter training college, they do so because they are going to be given alawa, so they are going to learn and also be given money. And I think it's actually also the reason I, at a point, also went to training college. I okay. said I never got admitted. Now, we do not have that policy anymore. Um, you are having to go for the student's loan, and that's something that puts a lot of people off. What would be your view on these two? Oh, the policy of Alawa is still, it's still there. Yeah, it's been returned now, but... It's not been returned. It's still there. Policy of Alawa, the, the students are taking the Alawa They don't take the... Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, something yeah, that was in that past administration. They were moving off towards... And then came yeah, in. so they were moving towards introducing student's loan, and they say yeah. that this is because of the degree that are going to be awarded so every college of education student should be treated as a university student. And mm -hmm. so if someone from UPSA can take a student's loan and pay back later, why should we give a different opportunity to someone at Accra, Technica, Accra College, college yeah. of Education? Okay. Yeah. I just want to know what your view is. Yeah, I think, I think that, is, that is some discussion that is going on that, or some views that people are expressing. But as far as I am, I, my knowledge goes, and from the ministry's point of view, the allowance is still there, and I know specific decision has been taken whether now that there are colleges of uh, university colleges, whether that is going to be um, taken off or not. And the, the thing is also not so much about the fact that you are now called university or okay. not called university, mm -hmm. you know, but the thing is about the group that we want and then some areas where you may not have people to go. On to go. Mm -hmm. So... You have to have a way of getting people to stay on, and when they are done with, they will want to move on to these areas where you can you can specifically get them to at least mm. for a certain period. You know, because there are we have our numbers are very huge, the largest among the government uh, 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 the payroll. But we still have areas where, when you go, you still have shortages here and there because of. A number of re reasons. Mm. For example, as areas like conflict um, areas, for example, um, you put people in there, but they will not want to go. You know, and some of these areas, what we now try to do is that we try and look out for people who are from those areas who are teaching elsewhere, and, and then we them convince back. them to go in there. Or when we want to recruit, we try as much as possible to get people who are from those areas. You know, it, that one, it, it sometimes is so a it's bit really easier. It's really difficult for you to get people to some you know, places. Yes. Yeah, How know, about rural areas? Do you, do you have difficulties? Rural, rural areas, generally, we don't have difficulties. But there are some specific rural areas where you have, as I'm saying, for mm -hmm. example, the conflict areas and also sometimes the, um, there are areas that we call um, uh, uh, overseas, overseas and yeah. things like mm -hmm. that, you know. And so... Those are some of those areas that sometimes you get the challenge of people going. Mm. And for people to go in there, apart from us taking them in there, I think there is also important that we stress that the communities, you know, the assemblies and the society try as much as possible to also put certain things in place for these people to come. For example, I, I was talking to you about Fiankuma. Mm -hmm. When I went in there, the accommodation that I had, was free. You know, someone offered 
um, uh, 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 a prominent cocoa farmer in the, in the offered, community. So it wasn't uh, a GES sponsorship. No, okay. but he offered that oh, if for the first time, this is the first time that we are getting a trained teacher. Mm -hmm. Let's, we let's should do everything to keep him. To keep him. So he offered me some chamber in the hall, um, <laughs> kind of, you know. Did the chief so, offer you a wife? Um, no, but uh, <laughs> I think those are issues that we will When talk President Akufado won the election, the primary thing on his mind was to implement the free senior high school. He yeah. put you in charge of Ghana Education Service. Did he deliberately put you there to run free SHS, or was it just a coincidence that you are coming to head GS at the time free SHS was topical? Well, the, I, 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 I wouldn't know his mind, so I wouldn't know whether okay. coincidence or not. But mm -hmm. at least I think what he needed was someone who could handle. I mean, for almost every area where he puts in people, what you need is to make people, put in people who you trust that mm -hmm. can handle it. At least their records will show that they will be able to do that. Mm. And I think one of the marks, marks of, uh, I mean, uh, a mark of a good leader is to be able to know who should handle what at right, what time, time. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And once you get that right, everything else will, 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 will flow. Three years on, what would you say is a verdict on free SHS? Three years on, I think that we've done extremely, extremely well. At least we have taken 400,000 students or young girls and boys who ordinarily would have been on our streets into the classroom and i think it's a plus for us the interesting thing is that there are even situations where i mean in spite of all the noise that we we're making people who have finished school usually you know it's about the year that you finish school or at least a year after but there were even situations where people who have finished school some four or five years you know subscribe to the free SHS and wanted to be on the program. That alone tells you how important it is. And if you listen to a lot of people, they will tell you. In fact, we did some comparison and then we realized that, yes, what we've done is good. We looked at the schools in the northern part of the country who were enjoying some um, scholarship of a sort. And then we looked at those down south who didn't have it. And then we realized that between them, those up there, the, the drop-up rate or the people who passed and were not going was just around, I think, is it 12% or 8%, something, you know. We came down here and it hovered between 25%, between 25-30% who passed, you know, and they, I mean, they qualified to go, but didn't go. You know, at that first point, we wouldn't attribute it to uh, finance per se, but it tells you something. And here they get something. About 12% are not attending. Here they don't get anything. Between 20 to 25%, uh, uh, 20, 25% to 30% are not attending. So what might be it? Then we, 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 we implemented, and then we saw that, yes, it is true that this gap actually that we are filling i mean we could attribute it largely to finance but not access you know as far as access is concerned when we write the exam this year for example last year when they finished we realized that about uh, we had space for about five hundred thousand plus you know but those who by the standards that we said and they are, they've qualified they were within they were within 400 something so there there was about almost i think uh, 25000 or so spaces that was there but we also realized that then it has a lot to do with the issue of the um funding for individuals and things like that so, so access is availability of the school access but, but space in schools and congestion for that matter is a topical issue with free SHS. You yes. are having to run double track system. How yes. can you say that yes. you don't have challenges in yes. that regard? The access access and the space, I mean the school issues may be with us for a while. And the reason is simple. 
we have 721 schools. But we have about something around maybe 60 schools that these are some of the schools that we know of old and almost everybody else wants his or her daughter or son to go in there. So you get um, some skewed kind of thing, you know. The person picks first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, fifth choice. But the person is still insisting that it is either first, first choice or I don't go to school at all. You know, so everybody, especially um, our girls' schools, we have a limited number of girls' schools, but virtually everybody wants to, I mean, once a girl, they think that the best place to put them is the girls' yeah. school. So what then we decided to do was that, let's still give them that opportunity, you know, and um, the facility is there, but we have to vary the way that we use that facility to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And that brought up the elsewhere, in fact, when you look into the literature, they call it uh, multi-track, others call it all year round and things like that, you know. Uh, we decided in our wisdom to call it double track. Uh, some people said shift, some people said all sort of things. But the key thing is that if, for example, if you take a school, Let's, say, let's take Achimota, for example. And Achimota uh, could take, let's say, 700 students at one stretch. And that would be to the brim. You can't add more. And that 700 may even cause congestion if you go to that brim. Now, what we have done is that we will now give Achimota, let's say, 1,300. So 600 extra. 600. So then we can put them into 650, 650. You have some space in there so that you can spread out. But now you've added additional 600 or more that officially or generally they wouldn't have had that opportunity. So for us, we think that it is a very good... So you add area. more and divide. And divide. But the teachers and have to work all around. Whilst you are doing that, whilst you are doing that, you also work up with the uh, what do you call it, the infrastructure to catch up. The interesting thing is that I'll come up, up to the teacher issue. The interesting thing is that we've had some conversation recently, and we are still struggling whether the schools that have had the facilities, whether really we should let them go off the, uh, what do you call it, the double track. track. Because now, if you have that facility, and now they can take the 1,300 at a go. So you, you, won't, you won't do anything about it. What, what about now having that facility? Now increasing it instead of the 1,300, increasing it to about uh, 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 2,000, mm -hmm. if that facility can do and then put them into two groups. And still do the double so track. So more students. And so there are people who are sending us memos and things and saying that don't stop this double track. Because you will, you will, once you maintain that double track with the new facilities that you are bringing up, you will get the opportunity to put more people in there. Did you have a timeline for double track by which time you expected to finish and say that all right, everything is okay, we built so many classrooms, we can now go back to normal, and I'll come back to the teachers. Yes, in fact, I, I, if you look at what has been happening elsewhere, I mean, some go up to about 10 years and things like that to make sure that they get back to the uh, I think the discussions that came up when this double track, track came was that we should give ourselves between five and seven years we'll build to catch up, we'll create more model schools, okay. we'll do a, a number of them, and then do that. But as I, as I said, there are, now the discussion is not turning so whether from to keep it whether not. to keep it or to... Did, did you have to recruit special staff for the second batch of students who come, or the same staff are running... Yeah, so forward, what so. we did was that when we did our analysis, the first thing was that we didn't want any teacher to be teaching all year round. Okay. That will be so stressful for them, and um, the, it, will, it will have a lot of challenges for us. So we did the analysis school by school, and then based on that, we said that the teachers will be on the various tracks. You know, So if two tracks are going at the same time, maybe uh, you have uh, Form 1 Gold, and then Form 1 
a form two gold, for mm -hmm. example, it, will, it should be possible for a teacher to be teaching on those So tracks. teachers get to enjoy vacations like they previously do all the time? Yes. Okay. Once, once your, 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 your section is formed. But we employed 8,500 additional teachers onto the free SHS to make sure that, Please and then that is teachers. And then we also employed we extra guess. hands for mm -hmm. the non-teaching staff. How are you going to assess the success of free SHS? Aside having absorbed students, would the WASI result be any determinant at all in the success or otherwise of free SHS? What are you looking at seeing? Or the, the WASI result with or without free SHS, we expect that the results should improve. Okay. Um, we expect that there should be nothing special about Akufuado graduates. We, we expect that generally, once you've gone to a, a certain, gone through a certain level of teaching and learning, you should improve. For this specific one, all things being equal, in fact, it is this COVID issues that are brought in there. Um, we hope that it won't affect us so much. But all things being equal, we expect that we will improve, and for for a number of reasons. Because we've put in a number of interventions that we think that will support that. Just before you entered, I think I was engaged with my financial controller. And what we were doing was that we were talking about the intervention that we give to the teachers. You know, we were just going through the formula to make sure that that uh, money goes. Before free SHS came, parents were given some um, the deuces and things like that, levies and Part of it was for extra classes and mm -hmm. all the extra things that the teachers mm -hmm. do and the staff do. This time around, as part of the package, government gives intervention, it gives 50, 50 cities per student per school. So if you have 1,000 students, you can multiply and then you know the amount that I need to take a break, but will the results of the WASI matter in the election of 2020? Well, that one is up to the politicians to decide. <laughs> this is a uh, face to face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandamadu. My guest is the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Opokwa Mankwa. We are having a conversation about free SHS. But when we return, why is he still keeping your students in school despite the calls from your, you, the parents, for them to be let to go home? This is the beating heart of an African, ready for what is next. And this is the sound of a Ghanaian drum, setting the pace. Together, it creates a seamless rhythm of what is and what is to come. A sense of purpose which says that there is more to the Ghanaian than a dream. Ghana always stands ready and First National Bank is happy to invest, partner and help Ghana to discover more. This is why we are happy to announce our acquisition and subsequent merger with GHL Bank, Ghana's leading provider of mortgage financing. A merger which delivers an opportunity to discover more growth and prosperity for all Ghanaians. Listen to the heart beat to the rhythm of the drums. It is time for Ghanaians to discover more together. First National Bank and GHL Bank come together as First National Bank. How can we help you? You're welcome back to Face to Face on CCTV. I'm Omaru Sandam, but my guest is the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Opukwame. Prof, why are you letting, why are you not letting the students go home? Is it the case that you, by all means, want to have success for free SHS so you can use it for the campaign of December 7th? Okay. Thank you. Um, the students have been well prepared towards their exams, but they had barely two weeks to start the exams. One of the things that we've done is that uh, we've given them textbooks in addition to their uh, uniforms and other things, textbooks in the core subjects. Uh, we've given them um, Q and A's. We need to prepare them to pass and pass well. You know, elsewhere, when you go, the idea is about getting it right. Here we are more interested in looking at the other side than looking straight forward. So we've done a number of interventions for them. I told you about the teachers one and all that. So just about two weeks to go, then this COVID came in and they had to stay home. 
in the course of the, this COVID, in fact, when the COVID came, we didn't know what was going to happen. In the course of it, then we heard that uh, uh, it has come to stay. So what you need to do is to work around it and see how life can still go on. So we put our heads together. We worked with our ministry, we worked with our, um, our management, we worked with our council. And then, based on the health advice that we got, we also had discussions with our key stakeholders. And then we felt the need that at least for those who had to write exams, it's important that we get them to write the exams and then finish up. It's not about um, election. I believe that after the election, life will still go on anyway. So it's important that, and if you monitored the media, when you got to a point where parents and students were asking, when are we going back to school and things like that, and we got a number of those things. So we felt the need that, look, it's important, having prepared them to this point, and the fact that this thing is not going to go any time now, we need to do something. We, we've all been told that all that we need is to be cautious, follow the safety, health and safety protocols. Um, as for the COVID, we can't rule it out 100% that you, after you followed it, for, you always hear stories about people who say, I followed it, I did this, I did this, I did this, but, you know, so you can't be, it can't be foolproof. Mm. But that also doesn't mean that because it's not a foolproof, we shouldn't be doing anything. At least if we don't take care, we may even get to a point where then we may lock up the entire country for until somebody comes out, uh, either who, World Health Organization, or somebody comes out and say that now you can open up the entire. And if, and it is, I, I, it's an international thing, so probably we, we may have to lock up the entire group, entire, uh, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, world, which we not do. But let, let me ask based you, on your. Let me ask you a very new question. So, Organizations are laying off workers. People are not being employed. You want to graduate people to go and become unemployed. What's the point? Why don't you wait until we figure this thing out so that you can then start churning out graduate? Because even if they finish school, it's not like they're going to proceed any further anyway. So what's the point? Well, we can't, we can't for now say that if they finish school, they can't proceed any further. One of the things that this thing has brought us, which has also shown a weakness not only in Ghana, but all the world over. It's about our effective use of technology, for example. And uh, I believe that even in the advanced countries, we realize that their level of usage of technology in their way of life, in education and things, still has some disadvantage, you know. So we believe that as the world gets itself together, some of the things that we'll be looking at is that, look, this thing can come back any time, or it's not going any way. So what are the things that we need to do? Life must go on. These children that we, I, I am in charge of, they are not, going, they are not necessarily going to uh, world of work. We expect majority of them to continue school. We expect that they will go into various tertiary institutions all over the country, you know. So we can't just say that, I mean, People are laying off um, workers, so let them sit. Workers have always been laid off with or without COVID. Maybe the layoff this time may be in higher numbers, but the world has not stopped because some worker was laid off or some, some person has finished school and has not been employed. You know, if you look at those who have finished university or other institutions and have not been employed, are we saying that because of that, we should stop we should get people not to go to school. If, that would be a very... If during the yeah. compulsory COVID vacation you were having online or virtual lessons, why can't you have virtual examination? Why do they have to come? Because your excuse for bringing them back is to take part in the examination. Yeah. Why are you not doing a virtual examination? Must examination be written on hard paper in a classroom at all, by all means? Yeah, for now I think it, it has to. In the first place, other schools are not doing that. In the first place, those who are organizing our examinations for us, they have not set themselves up to do that. We should have told them and to do that. You don't just wake up and do that. 
you have to you have to make sure that you have the expertise and the capacity to do that. And um, a lot of us, as I indicated, a lot of us, we have our phones and things and that we, we fiddle with and we know all the basic things to do with it. But educational technology and the use of technology in education is not something that up to the university, even, um, even, even sometimes even in the courses where we teach educational technology, we still find ourselves wanting. What we could do as we go forward is that now that this is the situation, we need to start working consistently and planning towards the possibility of having such exams and oh, things one of like the, that. One of the biggest things you do in your service is placing students in senior high cycle schools. Yeah. You computerize, computerize that, the yes. computerized school selection placement system. Yes. You do this every year. Yes. There are challenges sometimes, yeah. but you've largely been successful. Yeah. You have been able to program school admissions in a way so you know which school needs what, where. Yes. It means that technology has been deployed in the service. Yes. Why, since we went home in March, you did not tell Wayek that schools are having virtual lessons. You should consider virtual examination for them. That would have been pretty easy, especially considering that they are a private organization that has been charging us money since Adam's time to collect money mm -hmm. for, this, for these examinations. Why didn't you just manage? I believe they charge you money and they, they give you your money's worth. It's, yes, it's so not, yeah, same they thing give you We just give them a waiver yes, to but, import um, calculators. I, I don't think... Things of this nature, you just do some knee jerk. Oh, we've closed down, so start this, and then no, 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 it doesn't work that way. The children who are going to go through, who has taken them through these things? But you have there are, there are, there learning, are, virtual learning methods on television. You are doing for those yeah, who are so have, so. Do we write the exams on, on television very easily? You can do that if you want uh, to. So they sit in their houses and they will, will survive it. You know, you don't have there are, not every examination that yeah, is supervised. It's, it's something. Oh, well, if. Uh, very good exams are supervised. Prof, mean, tertiary yeah. universities, as we speak, yeah. universities, they've all been sending in their IAs and all of these. Yes, things. you are talking yeah. about tertiary universities, but even there, I have been part of the meetings as far as this reopening is concerned with the VCGs and whatever. Even there, at that level, they still have their limitations. And I think some of them even came out, some of the students came out about the fact that on most campuses, they have free Wi-Fi, etc. They have data that are given to them for uh, to use on, on a monthly or so basis. The moment you move out of the campus, you know, let's 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 not let's not try to assume that we it, it, it can't work now. But what it is important is that we should have in mind that we we should do something to work on. But it was working elsewhere. So why wouldn't it work here? Why it is not. Work? In fact. Sometimes we sit here and tout ourselves and say it's working elsewhere, it's working elsewhere. Even in America, if you listen to the news, listen to how they are struggling with, um, with, with, with uh, this COVID and all that, and then even in education, you know, they go, come and all that and things like that. So it's, it's something that is a good idea, but you don't have to just wake up one morning and then decide that you are going to do it. If, for example, we decide that, okay, we want to do it online or et cetera, the students, how are they going to go online? Are they going to go via their own tablets or they are going to go via um, uh, laptops or uh, desktops or whatever? And are, are we in the position now to procure those laptops and whatever and do that? Yeah, it if they're providing free needs. senior high school and now they are home, yeah. the money, the budget for free SHS is huge. Imagine if you diverted that into providing technology for no, the, education. The, the budget for free SHS has specific things that it's doing. Yeah, but if so the students you don't are just, not in school... You, you, you don't just divert. Yeah, but if they are not in school, what's no, the That point? would be very poor planning. That would, I think it would be the worst thing for any, any government to really? want to do. Yes. If you you deploy, just wake up and say, oh, now they, 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 so you they are just going to... No. You have to prepare yourself towards it. Now, parents are blaming you, yes. the boss, yes. for infecting their children with COVID-19. <laughs> Akagio, 55 people. Oh, Other why, secondary school. Why would parents figures. blame me? Because they were safe in their mother's In fact, so far, the parents, them out to the so far the parents who have called me, the parents who have called Cassandra, parents who have called my deputy Tandor, parents who have called a number of us, they are so glad about the things that we've put in place and how we are handling the issues. Really? They went to Accra Girls and insisted on taking their students Yeah, it's a, unfortunately, you, you, um, the media 
helped us to create panic, which was, uh, for me, was very, very needless. By reporting that six girls had reported, uh, t t tested the, for the, the, the point is that the students who reported symptoms of uh, COVID, the first report was on 29th June. I don't think at that time when somebody said this is how I feel and then I always say that I am I I always applaud the first person who reported when she went in there and then she reported and then they said it could be signs of that she also said oh Amma is my friend she also, she's also showing these signs Akusia is my friend she's also showing these signs and immediately they brought them in there mom will be uh, polyclinic uh, doctor forgotten the name but we we thank her very much she quickly rushed in and then they started all those um, tests I don't think we needed at that time 29th to come and tell the whole world that there is COVID why yeah. why should he tell you because it's information it has to go through the process which process well in the first place the person has reported yes you haven't seen any sign of it no, you as know. of the time the report so when it is confirmed when it is confirmed that is where that is where you will need to probably inform but the key people that you need to inform the key people that you need to inform are the parents and not, not all the, the parents but the specific parents not the public not the public at that point really what, 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 what is the public going to do about the it? public will know that you have brought students back and they started infecting each other in school so so they will say to you that, give us your uh, stone. So that they come back with the infection that they've collected in there, into the larger yeah, society, so that, that the bigger society gets infected. No, Is that I'm what saying we that. want? I'm saying that. So these children that are in Accra girls, yes. the 55 or so that I've tested now, yeah. they were safe in the bosom of their parents. You brought them to Accra girls, yeah. put them in a confined place. Yeah. One of them who also retained came with the virus and now started spreading in the dining hall. Okay, we wouldn't know whether it is one or two or three. Exactly. Yes. So but the point is also that we wouldn't also know whether whilst they were with their parents, they were safe. The point is that until you check, as we sit here, mm -hmm. until we check, all of us can just say that we are safe. Mm. And until we are on the on the bed where we are in an ICU or whatever that they say, yes, this person is COVID. All of us, we tell ourselves that we are safe. So you can't say that the fact that, I mean, they were with their parents, they were not ill, you know. But even that, I think I don't think that if that is what the conversation would be. The conversation should be, what were the measures that were put in place and what are the measures that have been put in place but you see, you issues have, of safety you and these measures that, sir, you know and uh, it's two weeks or three weeks into the reopening yeah you have 55 in Accra girls imagine yeah. if you have 55 in each of the 700 secondary schools that you have in the country yeah. we're able to keep them we have few treatment centers for so so in let's let's even assume that we have a whole school with it mm -hmm. the health people tell us that we'll be better off keeping them in there, treating them. If they have to go home, treated over the 20, uh, 14 days period, then they can go. But why did you bring if, them to come if, and turn their school into a treatment center? Well, we didn't bring them to come, come and turn their school into a treatment center. So, so my point the school if, is not a treatment if center. If there are 55 in Katabu school, there are 55 in Yendi secondary, 55 in all of these schools, yes. where are you going to put all of them? 700 times 55. Yes. Where so, will you put all of them? When we get there, we don't have that yet. When so we why? Get there, I mean, you are talking one, about one of planning. the areas that we did was that, where the issues that we raised was that for every school, there should be an isolation area. It, it has not happened. It has happened. It has why happened. Then we have been. That Accra girls people were sent to uh, Ghanaian hospital. We the health people decide on what should finally be done. It means that the you treatment know, center or the, the health center in the school is not up for, to standard. For a lot of individuals who have had it, the health people may decide that you do your isolation at home and then somebody visits you or sometimes nobody will even visit you but they'll give you the directions and the instructions to do. You know, initially when it started, they were even keeping them, some of them in the hotels, etc., etc. So depending on the the situation they may decide that let's keep them here let's 
put them isolated here and then let's treat. Do you have an inventory of proper infirmaries for senior high schools nationwide where students can be kept in isolation? Because clearly there isn't one at Accra Girls. Even if there is, it was not fit for purpose. That's why they were taken to Ga East. Every school that we have has some infirmary or some sick bay of a kind. The issue might be of maybe the standard of that, but what we have done is that we've done an audit of that. We've worked with uh, the health people. We've done an audit of that. We've also mapped up all the schools to the um, clinics and health centers around. For example, the Accra Girls situation was handled by Mamubi Polyclinic, and they are the people. If it gets to a point where they think that it goes beyond them, then they will refer it to another level where they think that it should be done. So as you're saying, yes, we have them. But as you've rightly said, they might not be of the standard that probably we need. And that is the things that we are working on with the health people, telling us the basic things that you need, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of those schools, a lot of the schools that um, through their own initiative, through their PTAs, through their um, old boys, old girls, whatever. Sometimes some of them, they even have standards that could even go for a clinic. You know, so occasionally you may have one of them, and then occasionally you may also have some poor judgment on the side of maybe some authorities and things like that. But that will not be a policy issue per se. Now, that's why all these things you've talked about, the students are recording the cases. And yeah. it's just a matter of time before we hear from other schools. For now, we know the highest number is from Accra girls, of course, yeah. other secondary schools. And even junior high school today, you said that a school in OT region has recorded a case in the GSS, which is, again, another problematic one. But for the junior high school, who's, they don't have a boarding facility, they go every day and go back home. What that means is that student A brings the virus to the school. Every student in that school picks that virus and takes it home to their community. So now the community spread is being championed by a, single, a junior high school that you have reopened. Well, the community spread is championed by ourselves who fail to do the things that we are supposed to be doing, who decide irrespective of whether we have something to do or not move. Because we've been told that once you move, the, 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 the disease also Why won't also we move? Moves. The president has said, go and register. You have to move. They said, go and prepare to, to write examination. You have to move. So it's not deliberate that they are moving. They were told Yeah, to but move. these are not the two things that, the only two things that are moving people. The markets have been open. The churches have been open. People have been told you yeah, can go so to weddings. Markets, markets are voluntary places. You can decide not to go churches to markets. Churches have been open. Mosques voluntary, open. you can decide not They're to not go. They're not voluntary. They are mandatory. For, for a Muslim, I'm mandated to pray five times a day. Okay. So it's not, and it's, it's not it's voluntary. it necessarily have to happen. In yes, the, in it the, must happen. In a mosque, if, if, so that's why it so was... So during the close down, what happened? It was compulsory, close down. Now yeah. the president said you can go ahead and pray. <laughs> they have said you can go to weddings. Yeah. They have said you can have all... Oh, these has weddings. weddings been added? Yes, up oh, to 100. Okay. Up so, okay so, up to 100. so the student goes to the school and then yeah, takes but, it and but brings I it home. I think we've said it over and over. And the mother will take it to the I think we said it so over and over. The point yeah. is that the only, probably the only surest solution is to close down the entire country until when somebody announces that COVID is gone, now you can open up. But that is also not possible. It's not possible in Ghana. It's not possible in any other country. The so, Council of PTA so, says you should let their students go home, would you? Well, if, if the Council of PTA has a student that you want to take them home, why not? So if I'm why a parent not? and I want to take my child from, yes, from we, we, Accra we, we, High, we am I allowed? try as much as possible to convince you because the child that you are taking home you don't know the child's status and you don't know what will happen when the child comes home with you and the the family and the bigger community what will be the nature of the convincing you have police deployed to Accra girls to prevent parents from taking their their wards home is that convincing or forcing no we 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 i think on the day that it was i think it was a monday last week monday or there about when this issue came up that was where um, parents who claim that they've not been informed whether they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are part of the six or etc. etc. rushed in there, and that is where it became an issue. But I don't know of today that when we said 55, any parent has rushed in there. So, any parent who wants to take their ward home, if you have a strong reason to take the child home, fine. But note that once you take the child home, the consequences are things that will be on you. 
again, the child is there for a purpose. If you don't allow the child to go through the process and then serve that purpose, it may not be possible that you will be given that opportunity to do that. Then, I mean, there's public and private. You may then, at a point, decide that you are opting out for a private school, but know that it is still school in a way. This is face to face on yeah. CCTV. Omaru Sandamadu is my name. My guest is Professor Opoku Amangwa, is Director General of the Ghana Education. When we come back, how psychologically ready are these students to take part in this examination, which is a determinant for the success or otherwise of free senior high school? Yeah, Chemo, what's up? Have you heard from Lawrence? Yeah, yeah. She's getting ready to go and register. For what? Register for the voters ID to vote for the first time. Not the Scotty son. Let me go ahead. Hey you, the chilling bro. How are you? I'm good, you. I'm fine. Body the humble lion. Have you been able to convince KB to go and wait for the upcoming election? Laura, I've tried. But K doesn't see the need to go and register. So please do your magic trick. Come on. My brothers, this is the first time you are going to cast our votes come December. No registration, no vote. And if you don't vote, someone will choose your president for you. I had a privilege to enjoy free education, so I must go and register so I can vote for my younger generation to also benefit from free education. This is so cool. Form, form of Anana. Anana. Yes, yeah, so form of Anana. 2020, 2020, form of Anana. 2020, 2020, ah. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. You have said that you will not allow the students to go home unless there's a tangible explanation given by the parent. You've also said that if a parent takes a child home, well, they should start considering the option of putting them out of the GES system and sending them to their school. You want them to write an examination. Let's talk about Accra girls, for instance. 55 students are in isolation. Would you send examination papers to them in isolation to write? Yeah, f f the 55 students who are in isolation, fortunately for us, the good news is that they are not um, told that there, there are levels. There is there is asymptomatic. There is uh, critical. There is mild. There is etc. For them, they've shown the symptoms, and so they don't show any signs of illness etc. So they are able to um, still study. And let me also make the point that actually they had just about two weeks to write the main exam. And then because of the lockdown, the president decided that we should give them a much longer time so that they can um, do their revision. So virtually within this period, they are doing revision. So wherever they are, they are, whether they are kept in the school or they are kept in an isolation center, they still have access to their books and materials that they can always um, do the revision. Um, I think the one bit of it that is also key is about psyching them up. And our uh, guidance and counseling unit, working with our SHEP, the SHEP is a school health uh, education program. And then there's also another unit in the um, Ghana Health Service, also known as SHEP School Health. They are collaborating, making sure that they are giving a lot of uh, counseling, a lot of uh, teaching, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, guidelines and training and things like that for both the staff and then the students. Mm -hmm. So but still that doesn't answer my question. Would they be allowed the fifty five? Yeah, can so they, the fifty five. Can they write the exams? The fifty five, we hope that they are in the right um, frame of mind to write the exam. As in how? So the isolation is for like fourteen the, days. The isolation is, is fourteen days. When is the examination? Um, the practicals for them is starting I think next week. So how do they do that? Um it, it runs for about a week or so for the for those that have practical papers, they may not, for, for the 55, we don't, we are yet to have the breakdown as to the specific numbers who are part of the practical. Some of them may be business, as mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. but if, if you are all science, of them if are practical, if you all can of they them, take part in the Rather than all of them are practical, uh, uh, practical based subjects, I have indicated that we, we are working with the health people. Mm -hmm. We put in measures. I know that while, once I was in school, there were situations where people get ill, they go to the hospital, and then we send their papers. As an examination officer at the university, we'll send the paper down to you. 
they will assess you and say that this person can write. Sometimes the student himself will say, I want to write. And then the health people will say no. Prof, so we're you... working with them. Mm -hmm. And then we will do that special arrangement if need be so that they can do the practical and then subsequently Prof, get... If, if by August when we are planning to write this exam, and I am not a prophet of doom, but yeah. if we have at least or even five schools recording similar figures as Accra Girls has, are you sure you can really send examination papers to them in their isolation wards to take part in this examination? Yes, if for any reason we can't send that to them, um, that should not be end of the life. Uh, end of um, life. It will be. They will miss the examination conducted by one. They year. will, but I think the key point is about their health. In our normal, regular times, we've had a number of students who are not able to go through the exams for one illness or the other. You know, they will always have a way of doing it. And I, I indicated today that one if for one reason or the other some students are not able to write the next available wasi exams will make arrangements okay. for them to write at the cost of government you have said that it is safer for the students to remain in the secondary schools yeah when they finish the wasi will they remain in the secondary schools or they'll go home? when they finish the wasi obviously they will go home so what's the, the conversation point? the conversation that we've had with uh, the WASI, uh, what do you call the Ghana Health Service, they will put in whatever contingency that they need to put in before you go home. Such as what? Well, uh, they, will, they will tell us the details, but maybe if it's about when you are going home, some arrangement to be made for you for quarantine or a quarantine before you go home or etc. This morning, I had that conversation with the Ghana Health Service um, Director General, and they will put in some measures before you go home, when you are going, the thing that will tell you to do or don't not to do and things like that. So obviously, once, it's just, just like we did the general lockdown, mm. and then the, the government then said, we are now uh, reopening. Okay. Government gave us some things that you need to do and don't do mm -hmm. and things like that. So we hope that all since those things have, will be put in place. Since you are looking as a service and you want to ensure that if we are to live with COVID, we still have our education running, what will happen to Form 2, Form 1, Class 6, Class 5, GSS GSL, 1, second KG year. and all What's going to happen moving forward? So from September, or by September, if we still can figure out this COVID, what is your plan? Yeah, so what we have done was that with this one, we, 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 we said it was a, um, what do you call it, a, a phase one. In fact, the unions even called it a pilot. We're learning from this. We're looking at what health and the data and the science people will tell us about this. And then based on that, we will then plan the, the, the phase two. And so that we go, and if, if the phase two will demand that only form two should go, or only form one should go, we will do, we'll do it, roll it out, and then we'll do that. Now, we all know that we are not in normal times. So the way that it should have been, in the past, we can't do that. Somebody has said, I mean, some health people have said, for example, that probably the last group of students who we should allow to go should be the KG or the, the KG and then the, the lower uh, uh, primary. primary. Um, a good friend was telling me that uh, uh, she told uh, her son that uh, she, she's sick, she has, uh, she has COVID and you could be infected. And the son, who is about five or six years, he says, Mom, I also want to be infected. I, I, I'll come to you. Don't come to you. So, no, I'll come to you. I also want to be infected. So you know, at that level, it will be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, if anything, we believe that the others, we could draw up a program for them to maybe finish up the semester, uh, the term, um, or those doing semester, finish up the semester, uh, the academic year, those doing term, do that. If but that would mean it, bringing them to the school. Though, yes, if, if we get to a point where the health people say, no, don't do that, then we will have to then strategize as to what we would need to do is that we could maybe forgo the rest of the academic year, plan it towards next academic year, which we which, may which, start, is what, which is what some people thought you should have done with the which, senior which high school students, the, next, the form three students. No, we can't do that with them. They have just about two weeks to go. You can't do that with them. 
And again, what we also why we also didn't want to do that with them, why we don't have to, is that there are about 600,000 children who are sitting out there who we don't want them to outgrow the level of their age to go to school. And very recently, if you go out there, you see that there's a, there's a banner there saying, take your child to school at the right age, you know. These things are things that they are not normal time, but we don't want, because they are not normal time, just throw our hands into the air and say that we won't act. We at still need to act level, with caution. Yeah. COVID-19 has taught us a lot of things. Do you think sitting on top of Ghana's education structure that it was a big error from the beginning for you to have banned the use of mobile phones among senior high school students especially? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And actually, even before the COVID-19 came, the the policy we are reviewing the policy based on the uh, exigencies of the time you know the point that, that but what what the ban was on students using it for things that do not inure to their and their learning uh, benefits what we are doing is that we want to use technology as i've indicated but we want to make sure that the technology is geared towards education so we need uh, uh, we need to do more of uh, educational technology. Mm -hmm. It's not about students calling home and calling friends okay. and things like that. Parents yeah. are watching you. I want you to put hand on chest and assure them that their kids are safe with you. They are very safe. And I can promise that, as I indicated, we set up about 300 teams going around. Um, my, 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 uh, Pia, she was in, she was in Obwasi. Mm -hmm. You know, others went to the north, all over the country, and including my council members, etc., and all that. We are not going next week because we want to look at our report, make sure that all the things they dot the eyes and everything, make sure that those who have challenges and things like that, we are, I mean, we rapidly go and resolve those issues. The week after next week, we are also deploying the teams again to go for another two weeks. Then, when it is the exam time, we we'll also go and they will also make sure that everything work, works right. Okay. The health people have told us, and we are want to believe it, and we want to um, we, 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 we make sure that we, we pray that it happens as they are saying, that within the first 14 up to about 21 days that the students are in school, if there are people or students with some of these things, those are the periods that they are likely to come up. So we are hoping that all things being equal, by the time they are writing the exams, they would, they would add in, there wouldn't be anything like a serious outbreak that will compel us not to write the exam. So parents should be well assured. If there is any issue that we need to get across to them, we will do that. Once we get the issues, those that we need to put in the public, we will put in the okay. public. Sometimes we don't put certain things in the public because we don't want to create some panic, but those who are affected and those that we you need to know. inform, we inform Paul, them. thank you for coming on Face to Face. Thank you very much for having me. And that will be it for this edition of Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sandama. We'll be back next week with another exciting episode. Don't go away. Stay with City TV. It's your world.